For over half a century, Luis Palau has been faithfully sharing the good news of Jesus Christ around the world. Born in Argentina and a U.S. citizen for nearly 50 years, Luis has experienced a unique call of God on his life. But what makes Luis Palau's story so unusual is, if it hadn't been for family misfortune as a child, he may never have left South America and gone on to become one of the world's most admired and respected Christian leaders. One day, while away at school, Luis received news that would ultimately change the course of his life. They called upon Dad out at boarding school and said, your father's very sick, you have to come home. Before Dad got there, his father was gone. Luis was only 10 years old. To make matters worse, mishandling of finances by an extended family member left the once affluent Palau's penniless. So Luis abandoned his dreams of going to law school and went to work at a bank where he earned a meager salary. Sometimes all there was to eat on any evening when we all came back, the girls from school and me from work, it would be a big loaf of French bread. She would divide it precisely for each one to have one slice, put a little garlic, toast it, and that was it. Sometimes we'd have one steak and cut it up into eight parts. I mean, that's, and that's what's what we ate. But Luis's passion was to share the gospel. I would have gladly had a business or been a lawyer, either one, but the real commitment of my life was to win people to Jesus Christ. There's nothing greater in the whole world. In a way, I often think maybe the Lord had to take my dad home so that I would leave the country and go international to, uh, to preach to millions. In 1960, determined to accomplish his mission, Luis Palau left Argentina for America. At Multnomah Bible College, Luis met Pat, his wife of 49 years. She's good looking, she was funny. A classmate said, you know, I think he really, have you noticed he's following you around? Also, she was very bright. You want spiritual life, but intelligence uh, goes with it. And, and she's very intelligent. He went to the library, I went to the library. And she reads far more than I do even. And she remembers, she's got a memory that's unbelievable. He could see from his dorm window, he could see me coming from a house off campus where I lived. Then he had hit the sidewalk just about the same time I did. The men's dorm in those days had been an old blind school. It had a, a fire escape that was a, like a tube. He would use that escape hatch to sneak out and go visit mom in their courting days. But the slide part was probably about the most thrilling part of an e one of their evenings, I'd like to think. She was committed to the work of missions. And that was what I was really looking for. Somebody who had the same view that life is preaching the good news, that the most important thing in the world is to pass on the good news to other people. The newlyweds took off to see the world as missionaries, raising four sons along the way. We never resented it. I know that there's sometimes a stereotype of pastor's kids being the worst troublemakers and they resent their dad and mom for not being there. But uh, none of us felt that way. Dad's always been warm and affectionate. Loves the family gathering, loves the whole clan to gather. Dad's just been great at the basics, you know? Just real basic disciplines of loving each other, putting their relationship with the Lord first, together second, and then the family third. Our mindset is we are missionaries. We are out there always leading people to Christ, always working for the kingdom of God, always leading people to God. Yeah. 